In this lecture, we link degree of extension with ramification. So let us first fix the terminology. So let A be a Dedekind domain with field of fractions k and uh, let B be the integral closure of A and this B lies in a finite separable extension L over k. So you take this prime ideal P in A and then you see that this splits in B like this and uh, you can say Fi is a degree of extension P over Pi and so this is a degree of extension Fi. So first lemma, so this lemma is kind of tautological. So prime ideal P divides P. So P divides uh, P essentially means that this capital P occurs in the factorization of this smaller P in green. So P divides me, P just means this statement right here. So this is true if and only if, if you contract this uh, bigger prime ideal back to A, so this bigger prime ideal lies in B, if you contract it back to A, you will just get this P. So first implication in this direction. So that is uh, this capital P divides this small p. So now P would lie in uh, P intersection A. Now this is obvious because uh, this is true for all extension and contraction. So this P, you extend it and contract it back. So, um, so this will always hold. Because uh, when you extend it, uh, uh, so this factorizes. So the ideal generated by this will contain this small p. But um, we are working in a Dedekind domain, so prime ideals are maximal. So maximality would give us this equality. So this will hold uh, clearly or obviously, and this maximality gives us the equality. Now in the opposite direction. So P is equal to this capital P intersection A. So that means this P lies within capital P because it lies in the intersection. So it lies in the capital P, which essentially is a way of writing that uh, this PB lies within the ideal generated by this P. So this just because now we are considering the extension in ring B. And uh, this uh, precisely means that P is in the factorization of the small p and which means being in the factorization means that it divides p. So we have done this direction also. So this lemma is needed to prove uh, this theorem here. So let us now uh, state the theorem. So let m be the degree of extension l over k. Then you sum up these ei and fi. So you have r of these eis and corresponding to every this capital pi you will have this fi that is degree of extension so you multiply this ei fi sum all of them you get m which is the degree of extension so this is one and the second portion is that so this uh, if this degree is galois then you can put all of these eis equal to e and all of these fi is equal to f so you can add them up r times so you will get e f r is equal to m so for a galois extension all these e's are equal and all these f's are equal so let us prove first part one of the theorem and part two we will prove in a separate lecture so we are going to use chinese remainder theorem so this b uh, you modulo out PB, you, we are going to write as B over this product PI because we are just taking this product here. So this product goes from uh, uh, 1 to this I goes from 1 to R precisely at, as it is given here and the Chinese remainder theorem now gives us this. So Chinese remainder theorem tells us that now this product will become P modulo PI EI 1 to R. So this is just coming from the factorization. We are just replacing this by this product here. So we should have EI here. So th replacing this with this thing here. So our strategy is this. We are going to show that EI FI is this extension B modulo PI EI over A over P. So then, um, so for each of these extensions has this degree EI FI. So now you can 
pro you have a product here so you can sum it sum all of them over um, so so you can sum all of them over to get this b over uh, pb over uh, a over p for this extension here you sum all of these so that will give you uh, sigma i e i f i so basically you take degree of extension of each of these terms over a over p and then sum for all these uh, eis we will get this um, so but we have to show this is equal to m so we are going to show this i equals to 1 to r this is equal to this term and then we will show this term is also equal to m so we will show number one this and then number two this and uh, that will prove this thing right here so uh, let us start by proving this uh, part one so notice that this uh, capital p i r i over p i r i plus one so that is the denominator has just it's just the numerator multiplied by this capital p i so this is b over p i module uh, because obviously both of these are ideals in uh, b and it has dimension one as b over pi vector space so we are not talking in terms of curl dimension and uh, we can say it is dimension one precisely because there is no ideal between pi ri and pi ri plus one these are two prime ideals and there is no ideal which lies between them so since there is no ideal between them the chain is just of length one and therefore you have dimension one here dimension one here so therefore uh, say fi we are anyway denoting this we are copying right here this we are saying is of dimension one and uh, this is dimension fi so one times fi so this is multiplication here will give you fi so uh, now you have pi r i over pi r plus one over a over p so because you can multiply these two and you get dimension of this over a over p this is just fi so let us keep this in mind we mark this as a so we have now shown that this thing has dimension fi over a over p so we have uh, somehow gotten fi now we need to get this ei so this ei we can only get from this exponents here so we have no uh, option but to build a chain like this so you we build a chain like this p contains this ideal pi which contains pi square but you can go all the way to pi ei because in the factorization you go till ei so you start taking quotients so the quotients of the form like this so denominator is just plus one of the numerator you start taking quotients and each of the quotients has dimension fi over a over p so that we have shown just so this has dimension f i over a over p so dimension of this just uh, uh, you have this f i occurring e i times because the length of the chain you can see is e i so dimension of p over p e i is e i f i because each f i is going to occur e i times every time you take a quotient you get f i here so every time i take a quotient in this I get fi you take pi quotient pi square you get fi pi square quotient pi cube again you get fi pi cube quotient pi 4 again you get fi and you add all of these pieces up to get uh, the dimension of p over pei which is ei fi so now we have shown this portion so this part is done and if this part is done you we have said before by Chinese remainder theorem now you can get the summation right here so we have been able to show one so this is done two is more complicated so for two we will proceed in uh, two different parts so let us call this part B and then we will have part C which will completely dependent upon part B so say B is a free a module for example a is a principal ideal domain so this is a very important sentence b is a free a module so our first case is that we are just considering free a module in the second case we will reduce it to the first case in particular in the second uh, case or the general case we will say that 
a is a PID so you need to keep this in mind because this will this is going to get erased when we uh, do the general case so B is a free A module so you have some isomorphism like this A and to B of A modules now L over K is a finite separable field extension that's what we have assumed so this is finite separable extension L over K so now you can use the primitive element theorem and then that would imply that L is just of the form K alpha where alpha is the root of an irreducible monic polynomial and this alpha would lie in B so now we can tensor this with L so if you tensor this with L which is just K alpha this will give you an isomorphism like this K into L because B contains uh, alpha already so you tensor it with k alpha you will get just k alpha which is l but if you tensor this with uh, this k alpha alpha does not lie in here so what you're just going to get is k n so this is what you get but l over k is just a vector space and we are saying this is an isomorphism so it has to be the case that m is equal to n because we are saying m is the degree of l over k and this isomorphism just shows that this degree has to be precisely n because l over k of degree uh, this degree m essentially means the dimension of the vector space so m is equal to n so now uh, we will put this uh, instead of m here we will have n this thing would be n and now we have just shown that m is equal to n now we tensor again this thing but now we tensor instead of L in the first case we tensor this with L now we are going to tensor with A over P so you have A quotient with P N to B P this thing so this is just property of tensor so that again means that this degree of extension is N and that's what we wanted to show so this is precisely N right here so we have n and n is equal to m we showed here so you have this equality so the crucial part was played by this so again recall what we did so first thing was to relate this to this degree of extension for that we had to use the Chinese remainder theorem uh, so for Chinese remainder theorem we just have to consider this instead of b over pb but we are saying b over pb over a over p so we have to find a dimension of this so the dimension of this we are saying is EIFI to make sure this is EIFI we have to construct a chain like this so P over PI would be EIFI if you at every portion you have this FI and then you have it EI times so that means PI modulo PI square this has to be of dimension 1 and this has to be a vector space uh, of dimension FI over A over P and that's how it proceeded and part B was simple you just have take B as a free module like this first tensor with L and then tensor with A over P and we are done now what if B is not a free A module so in that case what we are going to do is we do localization which will give us a local ring but since we are uh, working with a Dedekind domain it will become a principal ideal domain and this entire procedure will carry over so let us now see that part so as we said before we are going to reduce the general case to the previous case so that B becomes a free A module in particular we want to make A as a PID so what you do is um, for the general case you first localize so you pick up a multiplicatively closed set S which is A minus the prime ideal P which is under consideration for factorization so this is the same prime ideal sitting right here and now you can have rings of fraction A prime and P prime so first thing is once you localize with respect to this prime ideal you get a local ring with a unique maximal ideal P A now in addition we get A prime as a principal ideal ring now this is actually a function of a being dedekind to start with so this is a fact one which we are going to use fact two is under localization uh, the integral closure uh, is the same or you know doesn't change so this we have talked before 
so this b prime will be integral closure of a prime so under localization uh, nothing there's not much of a change so if b was integral closure of a you localize a and you localize b with respect to the same multiplicatively closed set we get b prime and a prime and b prime is integral closure of a prime now uh, this pi divides p so you have this thing right here and this pi intersection s the multiplicatively closed set is just the null set so from here what we get is this p prime pi or you can say this capital pi b prime this is a non zero prime ideal of p prime so the factorization like this which is this factorization right here we writing like this i equals uh, from 1 to r this would imply in b prime this factorizes like this so this is uh, just uh, from this fact here so because a contraction will come back to p and after localization you can talk about prime ideals of localization which are precisely those which do not meet the multiplicatively closed set s so that would uh, lead to this result here so essentially the factorization in b would carry over to b prime now in the first part of the proof we uh, showed this portion so now you can use the chinese remainder theorem and every uh, statement for a and b right here to get this result so just like in the first part of the proof now uh, we want to show that this is equal to m and this equality comes from the fact that a prime is principal so you can talk about b prime being a free a prime module so you get this equal to m so this is what we had proven in the first part and this is what we are carrying right here so instead of b we are using b prime and instead of a we are using a prime and uh, that is it so that is the general proof so the strategy is for the general proof proof you just localize and that localization makes a prime into a principal ideal ring so you have a free a module and that is precisely you get this and for the second part uh, you just yeah so you get this and this just follows from the chinese remainder theorem now applied to b prime and the same process as before